Hello everyone, James Reeves with the Firearm Blog TV, aka TFB TV. There are two types of people in this world, at least two types of people that matter. People who think that the AR-15 is better than the AK-47, and believe it or not, people who think the AK-47 is better than the AR-15. Now, you may remember a few weeks back, I did a little video. It was a humorous video as probably most of you gathered, not all of you, but most of you gathered, where I poked a little fun at the AK-47 and AK owners. We can do a little flashback here. If we're in fact, insulted because the AK-47 is the gun that actually sucks as a survival rifle. And I'm gonna give you seven reasons why that is. So we've kind of had this acrimony between AR guys and AK guys playing out in the channel and I've really been enjoying it. I showed you guys my AK collection. I'm a huge AK guy. I do think that the AR-15 is a better gun, but I really do appreciate and love the AK. And in fact, I think I like my AK collection better than my AR-15s. But in the theme of ARs versus AKs, I think I'm just gonna do like a series of videos where we have these little tests, AR versus AK. Today on TFB TV, the Gat Sickle Challenge. I went and bought a shitload of dry ice and I bought a thermometer that went down to negative 20 degrees because I figured it's not gonna get any colder than negative 20 degrees in the cooler with this AK and this AR. Turns out, yeah, I was wrong. Let's see how they look. Dude, these things are gross. They're like legitimately, oh my God. Dude, check out that AR. Oh my God. Dude, there is no way. Really freaking cold in there, so cold that I think it broke the thermometer. It was way dialed down. Uh, so I don't know, it could have been negative 40, negative 50, negative 100. I don't know how cold it got. But it was so cold that these guns froze solid. Like this AK and this AR froze all the way through solid. It was incredible. I was positive I was going to die, so I bought a little helmet to wear. I'm not sure how much protection this Amazon helmet would have afforded me if one of these guns would have blown up, as I was sure it was going to do. But I was willing to take one on the chin for you guys because I love you guys like that. So we just got an off the rack inexpensive DPMS AR-15 and an off-the-rack relatively inexpensive Yugo or Serbian M70. Chillier than my wife's reception to me when I come back from bowling at 2 a.m. Holy crap. There's no way this thing's working. It is completely iced up. But look at this. It's got ice in the effing trigger. Safety works, that's good news. Wonder if I can still do TFB TV with one arm. God, might have to even mortar this thing to get it going. So I had to mortar the piss out of this AK, not once, but twice. I did it once whenever it came out of there because the action wouldn't cycle. But then when I put the magazine in, it still wouldn't cycle. I mortared it again and around chambered. So that's maybe a strike for the AK. I mean, you can't cycle it without butt striking it. Not a big deal, not a big strike, a little strike, a baby strike. But then once we got it gassed up, I was surprised at what happened. All right, here we go. Oh, this thing's definitely not gonna cycle, but. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Just got in there. All right, here we go. Wait. Good. I'm gonna hold this thing maybe a little bit further from my face. Ready? Bag full stock.
my God, that's unbelievable. I, I, we couldn't even hand cycle around in. Had to mortar it a couple of times. But once we butt stroked this bad boy, got one rammed in there. That's what she said. It ran perfectly. I mean, there were, there were no malfunctions. Were there any malfunctions? There were no malfunctions of any kind. That's impressive. The AK-47 living up to its namesake. Utter durability. Back in the icebox, you go. I don't know if I couldn't believe it or if I could that the AK ran flawlessly. So I actually had very high expectations for the superior platform, the AR-15. And in fact, got it out, this gun was frozen solid and it charged perfectly. All right, let's see if it charges. I'll be damned. I mean, charged just perfectly. You look good right there? I shoulder it up, get ready to fire it. Actually, I don't shoulder it up because I couldn't shoulder it due to the visor and I also had to kind of like hold it in front of my face. I've seen gas tubes blow up on AR-15s and I was fairly certain that's what was going to happen this time. And then I pulled the trigger. Nothing. Okay, so we definitely have the firing pin must be frozen because we're getting, even though the hammer is moving forward, let's see if we can maybe free up that firing pin. I know the hammer is inside the receiver and it's whacking against the back of the bolt carrier and that's where you have the back of the firing pin. That hammer should be whacking that firing pin, hopefully setting it free. I don't see any obstructions. God, wouldn't it be wild if I freaking take this thing apart and there's no firing pin in it? Let's give it one more shot. Nothing. All right. Time to take this thing apart. So there's the firing pin. Yeah, and you can see it protruding right there. That's the firing pin protruding out of... It should be working. See that? The firing pin popping out of the bolt face. Let's give it another shot. Maybe messing around with it just freed it up a little bit. Here we go again. They say the only thing louder than a bang when you're expecting a click is a click when you're expecting a bang. And unfortunately, the AR-15 disappointed me. I mean, goddamn firing pin. I can't believe that. I, I'm curious to know. Maybe some of you can enlighten me or at least we can figure this out between all of us. I want to know how much force an AR-15 hammer exerts versus how much force an AK-47 hammer exerts. The only thing I can think of, there are engineers out there in the comments and you guys I know who are way smarter than me that watch some of these videos, I'd really appreciate your input. In my mind, uh, maybe the way that the AK-47 firing pin is contained in the bolt versus the, that, the channel, that uh, firing pin channel that the AR-15 has, that could be one factor. Another factor could be the amount of force. I mean, I feel like if that AR-15 hammer, which generates a, a decent amount of force, if that thing really thumped the back of that firing pin, I feel like this would have worked. 
In the meantime, the AK hits pretty hard too, especially in a gun like the Yugo where you've got a braided trigger spring. I bet that thing's coming down really hard and you wouldn't have to worry about a firing pin getting jammed up. I should also note that both of these guns got completely soaked when they thawed. The AR-15, as you can see here, it looked like it was brand new the next day. You couldn't tell that this gun was frozen all the way through and then completely saturated. The AK, on the other hand, covered in rust. And also the Serbian guns, their bolts are basically in the white, like untreated bolts without any bluing, parkerizing, anything on them. So they never respond well to rust. I've already used Brownell's Alumahide on my M92. That is my short barreled, my Krinkov style Serbian AK. So I decided to use the same stuff. That is Brownell's Alumahide. I used Gray Park. I refinished the AK just briefly. I scoured it with brake cleaner, non-chlorinated brake cleaner, removed the old wood furniture, put synthetic furniture on it, and then covered it in one coat of Brownells Alumahide. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to get the same color, but I think it turned out actually pretty well. Anyways, guys, this one goes to the AK. Point for the AK in the Gatsickle test. That makes the score AR-15, 83 to AK-47, 2. I think, if you've been keeping score at home from the tests and the videos that we've run over the years. Unsurprisingly, the AK, one of the most rugged guns out there, so I guess it's no surprise. I mean, I was fairly certain neither of them would work, so I've got to say I was very impressed with the AK-47. I'm also impressed with the fact that people actually watch this channel. You guys just watching, especially you guys that subscribe, I really can't express my appreciation enough. Speaking of appreciation, you guys that get on patreon.com slash tfbtv and subscribestar.com slash tfbtv, you help us keep this content free and shill free. We don't have to accept money from manufacturers because only because you guys are supporting us on Patreon and Subscribestar. So we appreciate your help. Think about giving us a buck a month, two bucks a month. Hey, if you do five or 10 bucks a month, you could even win a free gun every month because you're automatically entered into a free gun drawing. Also appreciate our sponsors, Blue Alpha Gear right here, repping. Ventura Munitions, the best ammunition store in the entire world. Hopefully they're getting some inventory back after this pandemic scare kind of dies down. And Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. Guys, thanks a ton. Another big win for the AK-47. We're gonna keep it rolling. We're gonna have some challenges periodically moving forward. And stay tuned because we've got the TFP TV Summer Jams playlist coming up real soon. Take care.